should wait to afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a word of prayer. Yes. Almighty God, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for the blessings of life. Thank you, God, that you are with us. And guide me through these words in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I'm not sure if I'm getting feet feedback or not, not but if I want to stand farther away and you're doing fine. You're good. I don't want to lash out. So um, from a scripture reading from on second um, Corinthians four verses one through seven, if you like to follow along in your regular Bibles or electronic devices at Second Corinthians four. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we have engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or falsify God's word, but by open statement of truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the mind of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. But we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your sake, for, for Jesus' sake. Excuse me, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that the extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. Amen. That's the word of God. Thanks be to the Lord. This portion I wanted to really focus on is in verse 5. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. In 2002, there was a movie made called The Rookie. And the theme of the movie was the life of Jim Morris. Jim Morris decided to try out for the minor leagues in baseball. He hurt his shoulder so his career was over. Years later, he was a um, chemistry teacher and baseball coach for high school. His team challenged him. If they won the district playoffs, he would try again for the minors. Of course, he was older by this time. He had two young children, wife, teacher, career. But they won, and he tried out. And he was chosen. He was accepted for the team. He had a good pitching arm in spite of his injury. Well, he had some struggles traveling with the team, trying to keep in touch with his family. This was all before cell phones and computers and all that. And what happened was one evening he went to a little league game. He noticed the excitement on the players. And his attitude changed. He went back and was talking to one of his fellow players and said, guess what we get to do tomorrow? And the uh, player said, what? And he said, we get to play ball. And that was exciting. And the good news of the story is that he and this other player were both called up. They were called up to the majors and he played two seasons in the major league. And the announcer said, from grading papers to throwing balls in the major league. That's what a goal of his life was. He was excited about playing ball. There's so much in our lives that we have to do, maybe we want to do. Some of us are of a certain age, 
that we have to go to the doctors. <laughs> Maybe you have a full calendar of doctor's appointments. <laughs> Most of us don't want to do that, but that's part of life. But there's other things that you enjoy doing. Maybe a hobby. Maybe walking. There's so much that you could have on your list. Or taking a vacation or being with your grandchildren. There's so much that we enjoy or have to do. But I wonder, as I read this scripture and thought about Jim Morris, could we put on the things that we want to do? We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. Do we really want to do that? And I have to confess that sometimes that gets to be left behind. There's so much I want to do and need to do and think about doing that I know I should do and don't get around to it. I guess I can say with my age and retired that I can put it off another day. <laughs> I do some of that. But still, Jesus, proclaiming him, because the temptation in my life, and I don't know about yours, because I was um, brought up in a Christian family. My um, parents took me to worship as far back as I can remember. Um, I can remember going, my father was uh, military and he traveled a, a lot, but in each location we attended worship. Whether this was on base or um, in, in, when he lived off base in the community. The church was an important part of my life. So the temptation for me is to believe that everyone is a Christian. Yes. I can yes. believe that because I was reared in the church and my friends were Christian. Those who I saw on Sunday morning were Christian. Some people in the community I know are Christian. Now that's a temptation. <coughs> I know differently and you know differently. You know there are many in our community who don't know Jesus. We don't have to go to Africa or wherever, but there are people in our community. But the temptation for me has always been, well, I don't really need to proclaim Jesus because they're already Christian. They've heard the message, but they haven't accepted it. Maybe some of them have heard it. Maybe some of them haven't. Maybe they've heard just enough when they were children. Or maybe some of them have come to a funeral or wedding. That's becoming less and less now. Um, you know the story of how you get bats out of a church building if they're in the belfry. Well, you catch them, you baptize them, you have them join the church, and the only time they'll come back is Christmas and Easter. <laughs> it seems to be coming like that, doesn't it? And what I've experienced more and more is fewer and fewer are coming back for Christmas and Easter. Yes. 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 Seems like the same crowd or maybe even less are coming back at yes. Christmas or Easter. <coughs> they need to hear Jesus. Yes. And we have a wonderful message of good news. Paul knew it. Amen. Paul Amen. proclaimed it. And you and I can proclaim it as well. Because I want people to experience life now and for eternity. Yes. Amen. I just don't want them to wait to near death and hope they get in. I know Jesus is merciful. By grace we have been saved. It's not what we do. So any time a person can receive. But I want them to experience a life that I've experienced in Jesus now. 
and for eternity. Because I've got a feeling I know what hell is going to be like. I think I've experienced a couple of times. <laughs> Have you ever been to one of those cross-stitch stores where they have aisles and aisles and aisles of cross-stitch stuff? And somebody's with you. And they have to look at every <laughs> And they have this stuff called embroidery floss. I know about dental floss, but I don't know about embroidery floss. What's this thread that they just don't have one green or blue or purple? They have bukus of green or blue or purple. And this person is looking at everyone and ooing and aahing. And finally, it's checkout time, <laughs> or you think. And I'm pulling out my credit card, just waiting, waiting. I know the purchase is going to be made so we can get out of that store. But no. <laughs> no, there's another section that this person has missed, and they have to go back again, and I want to pull out my hair. <laughs> Some of you here have had that experience. You <laughs> pulled it out. I'm ready to get out of that place, and that's what I think hell's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't want anybody to experience that. I want people to experience life now and for eternity, eternity with Jesus. I have that assurance. I know I've claimed the promise. I don't know when it's going to be in my life, but I've claimed the promise. People say, well, I hope I'm going to heaven. I know I'm going to No if, ands, buts, whatever. Nothing will separate me from the love of Christ. Amen. 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 And so, when those temptations come to keep me from claiming Jesus, I pray for opportunities. I pray somehow that Jesus would be proclaimed through my words and action. I want to live the faith. Yes. I hope Jesus shines through what I do. Now, there's some of what I do that is there to help people. And I give to different community groups. And some of them um, are just there to help people's lives become better. They're struggling. And I want to do that because I want their lives to be enriched. Amen. And so some of them are homeless or struggling financially, so I'll give to through a civic club or maybe a charity in the community because for me that's important. But I also want what I do to honor Jesus. Amen. So I want to make sure that people realize that the love of Jesus is shining through. Amen. Because if I just give and Jesus isn't mentioned, some people will never know. <clears throat> They'll never know why we do what we do. There's a story in the, um, it's in Acts 14. And in that story, Barnabas and Paul are traveling to this town of Lystra. And a man is crippled from birth. And healings takes place. And the town folk declare Paul and Barnabas gods in the flesh. Barnabas is called Zeus. Paul is called Hermes, the chief spokesperson. At first, Paul and Barnabas don't understand what's taking place because the town folk are speaking in their own language. 
But they, when they understand they can't believe it, they tear their clothes, they try to explain, no, no, we're not gods, we're just mortals. They have to explain it. And we do too. We need to explain why we do what we do. Yes, I want to help people. I want their lives to be better. Often when there's a need in the community, and I know some of us may not carry the cash anymore like we did, but I hope I can give a dollar here or a dollar there or more if possible. Because I'm grieved at people suffering in our community. I'm grieved at the homelessness or the abuse or all that's occurring. But I also want people to know that Jesus is behind it. Mm -hmm. That he is the one who gives good news. So both go together. I pray for myself and pray for each one of us that we will put it in action. We'll live out the faith. We want to and we'll find a way to tell people why. And you don't have to be on a street corner with a sign. For me, that's not my style. I know some people can do that. But there are ways that we can. So pray about it. Ask God's Spirit to guide you to the right person, the right opportunity. Psalm 107, verses 1. 1 and 2. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And then verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell the story. Some translation, translations say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The one I read, tell, tell the story, same principle. Whether it's say so or tell the story, the same thing. We have a story to tell. And if you read through Psalm 107, the whole psalm, it's a long psalm. But there are little vignettes or little um, sub-stories about what people experience and how God delivered them. How God brought them out. So each story focuses on verse 1 and 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm not Billy Graham or one of the other great evangelists. Another temptation is that I envy those persons. I wish I could be like them, but I'm not. I'm me and you're you. But you have a story to tell. Amen. You have a story of what Jesus has done for you. Amen. It might not be dramatic as Paul on the Damascus Road. My story seems so ordinary compared to them. What Paul's story. I didn't have a story of the lights and the mountaintop experience. But it's God's story in my life. Amen. And I want to make sure that people hear it. That people have the opportunity that I can plant that little seed, spiritual seed in their lives. And somebody else can come along and water it or get rid of the weeds or whatever. Or keep the deer out in my garden. <laughs> and the rabbits and those critters. Um, but Paul knew it. Paul went from place to place. And he wrote about it. And he wrote in verse 5 of 2 Corinthians 4, which I read, For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. And then he writes about that light shine out of darkness. Yes. There is so much spiritual darkness in our world. And not just in our world, in our communities, in our neighbors. And sometimes it's difficult. 
Some of my neighbors I never see. I think they must hide or they come out when I'm not there. So it's very difficult to meet them. But I pray when I do meet them for the opportunities to at least plant that seed, to allow the love of Jesus to flow. And it can flow through you. You don't have to be the great evangelist. You are you. I'm me. And God's at work in your life. I know it. And we talk a lot here. I thought when I came in, I needed earplugs. <laughs> we can talk, friends. We can talk, brothers. Amen. We can share what we've experienced. Amen. Because we have a story. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. Yes. Amen. And ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. God's at work through you and me. Hallelujah. Almighty yeah. God, thank you that you are our Lord and our Savior. Thank you for the food that has been prepared and those who are serving us. Lord, we are truly blessed spiritually and you will be blessed physically as well. And we are blessed with the relationship we have with our brothers in Christ. Lord, guide us throughout this day. For it's in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.